this edition of RPPV News. The Tainong North murders revisited. The Flinders Pier has friends in high places. And a Dramana Jim is going for gold. Hello, I'm Katie Sharp. Welcome to the latest edition of Audible PV News, bringing you stories from across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula. Homicide Squad detectives are asking for help with a cold case dating back to the early 1980s, when six women were abducted and murdered in just over one year. Known as the Tainong North and Frankston murders, the victims were aged between 14 and 73. At the time of their disappearance, each victim was on foot and did not have access to a car, with the majority intending to travel on public transport. The bodies of all the victims had been left in scrubland in the Tainong North and Frankston areas, and efforts were made by the offender to conceal their location and their identity. Police have released photos of all six victims and urge anyone with knowledge of who is responsible for their murders to contact Crime Stoppers Victoria. The council budgets for the coming year have been adopted and both Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula councils are focusing on the recovery after the pandemic. Along with the $3.86 million relief and recovery package, Frankston Council is offering $1.1 million in ratepayer reward vouchers, which can be used at the Peninsula Aquatic Recreation Centre, Frankston Arts Centre and on hard waste collection. Mornington Peninsula Shire is putting $10 million directly towards recovery projects, programs and initiatives. Both councils are investing in major infrastructure projects. Jubilee Park Stadium in Frankston is getting a $35 million upgrade, while the Shire is providing $52,000 for a new Mornington Peninsula Festival. The Frankston budget includes $34.5 million in the maintenance of municipal infrastructure, which covers things like roads, footpaths, drainage and parks. The Shire Capital Works budget is just under $43 million. Full details are on the council websites. Over 15,000 people have signed a petition urging the Victorian government to halt plans to demolish the 157-year-old Flinders Pier. Parks Victoria and the State Minister for Ports and Freight, Melissa Horn, claim the pier needed to be removed before it becomes a hazard. But locals are concerned the demolition threatens the habitat of the endangered weedy sea dragon, which feeds off coral that is attached to the wooden pylons. World-renowned naturalist Sir David Attenborough has written to the Flinders Community Association that is fighting to stop the demolition, indicating his support and opposition to changes that threaten the sea dragon's survival. Flinders Community Association representative Chris Rees has told nine entertainment newspapers that in recent years Parks Victoria has let the pier deteriorate and is ignoring its own policies on infrastructure support. The group are calling for an urgent meeting with the state government to discuss the demolition plans. A Dramana gym is throwing its weight behind a bid for Olympic gold. One of the top weightlifting coaches in the world, Paul Koffer opened the Oceania Weightlifting Institute in Dramana, where he is training current Olympians and what he hopes to be future gold medalists. Josh Farrell has the story. In an industrial estate in the Mornington town of Dramana, a group containing some of the best weightlifters in the world train. Paul Koffer has over 40 years of experience in weightlifting training across the Pacific with the 78-year-old still training lifters today. Whilst his group is smaller, his passion remains the same with Olympian Dika Toa training with him before leaving for Tokyo. Paul has brought the Oceana Weightlifting Institute to Australia to help train Australian Eileen Thikamatana. While she is unable to compete at the Tokyo Olympics, Paul is confident in her ability and her prospects moving forward. Well, she's the best in, in the world and uh, she's a bright young lady and uh, full of enthusiasm and uh, like touching uh, a wire, an electrical wire and you're getting a spark, you know, and see her lifting and the way she is. Um, she lifts, it's, um, it's really something that motivates you. Fijian-born Thikamatana was suspended by Fiji for refusing to train with another coach. She took Australian citizenship and moved with Paul to the Mornington Peninsula. I made up my mind just to stick with, with Paul Koffer because he's been there for me since day one, especially the Fijian coach has been behind supporting. And it was, that was the only thing I could think of because in weightlifting is an individual sport and it's between the athlete and the coach. In a recent online competition which does not have professional status, Thikamatana broke the Commonwealth Games record lifting 274 kilos. 
Vika Matana has a Commonwealth Games gold medal already with her passion to train remaining the same as she looks ahead. Yeah, the training was the first thing that caught my attention because um, when I was growing up I, I tried all sorts of um, all different types of sports but nothing was really challenging like weightlifting. When my class teacher asked me do you want to do weightlifting I was like the first thing I tried and I fell in love with it because Every day when you train, you challenge yourself to break that barrier. Koffer is winding down his illustrious career with Thika Matana and has high hopes for her in the future. I'm finishing after she wins gold, but to bring somebody from a young 14, 15 year old to an Olympic gold medal, that's something that you know, stays with you forever. And registrations are open for the 2022 kindy enrolment of Peninsula children. Families who register before the 18th of July will have the best chance of getting a spot at the kindergarten of their choice. After community consultation in February, the Shire has developed a new allocation priority which goes in the following order. Children identified as high priority, siblings, those who live closest to the kindy and children who live on the peninsula. This change will not impact the allocation of kindergarten places for children identified as high priority by the Department of Education and Training. The Victorian government subsidises fees for some children so they can attend free or at low cost in the year before they start school. For more information or to register, visit mornpen.vic.gov.au forward slash kindergarten. And now we go to David Robertson with the Bendigo Bank market update. The economic recovery continues here and around the world but with the same risks and complications as the last few months. Our updated forecasts, halfway through 2021. Despite the recent snap lockdowns in a range of locations, including Sydney and Brisbane, and disjointed at best progress on the vaccine rollout, the Australian economy has continued to respond with a remarkable strength to stimulus measures. It's a great relief to continue to see the aggregate numbers much stronger than pre-pandemic levels, despite the unevenness of the recovery. With fresh record highs in the latest data set for property prices and housing finance, for business conditions, a record trade surplus in May, and for aggregate job numbers. As the chart shows, our total employment is well ahead of the previous peak in early 2020, unlike most other countries who are still trying to recover all the jobs lost through the pandemic. Jobs growth has certainly been uneven here by industry, but importantly, each Australian state and territory is ahead of pre-pandemic levels of employment, and record highs for job vacancies suggests that this trend will continue, with 27% of employers reporting difficulties in finding staff in June. All of this progress has encouraged the Reserve Bank to announce a tapering in policy support, with quantitative easing paired back to $4 billion per week from September, and a concession that RBA rate hikes are now more likely to be earlier than previously stated. As we flagged in our April and May updates, the timing of an initial interest rate hike in early 2023 would be consistent with the economic progress and extent of fiscal support. And since then, November 2022 has also become a plausible candidate given the context of rising inflationary risks and tightening labour markets. So, the main factors in official interest rates will be inflation, wages growth and how quickly we reach full employment. Also, while the RBA don't consider the property boom to be central to monetary policy, they have noted the scale of price rises and the strong demand for housing credit, with investor lending up 13% in the month of May alone. Regional property prices rose over 17% last financial year matching the outperformance of regional Australia for employment, another example of the unevenness of the recovery. From here, we still expect property to perform strongly, given RBA rate hikes are more than a year away. But the pace of price increases should level off, especially with the fall in population and net migration growth. And that's where the same familiar risks come back into view. When will our vaccination rates allow greater mobility and the reopening of international borders. And ahead of that, how large will the fall in consumer confidence be from the ongoing SNAP lockdowns? The Aussie dollar has been well correlated to consumer sentiment, and so the latest dip in our dollar does make sense, 
especially given the recent surge in the value of the US dollar. But assuming the lockdowns can be contained and vaccination rates pick up as supply increases, then the Aussie dollar should return to following commodity prices higher. And finally, stock markets remain near record highs here and overseas, still focused on a strong recovery through this financial year and beyond. But while this new fiscal year will have the same levels of policy support, the closer we get to RBA rate hikes, the more volatile the markets may become. And that's the market update from Bendigo Bank. After the break, we go to Patricia with the coming week's weather report. There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solarheart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart, get Solarheart. Established in 1988, Progress Science has been servicing the local community for 30 years. Located on the Mornington Peninsula, they are the number one destination for all your signage needs. Specialising in a variety of signage from vehicles to shop fronts, occasional and corporate events, short term, long term and everything in between. If it's signs you need, be it large or small, Progress Signs is the place to call. Available 24-7 at progress-signs.com.au or call the team on 5975 9188. Thinking Signs? Think Progress Signs, a station sponsor. RWP PFM and Bendigo Bank have a long-standing relationship. Without the Bendigo Bank, we wouldn't have a transmitter site, we wouldn't have a studio, we wouldn't have an outside broadcast fan, and without them, we can't tell the stories that we think the Bendigo Bank community, our community, needs to hear. Thanks, Bendigo Bank. Thanks for your support. Patricia and welcome to this week's RPPV 7 Day Mornington Peninsula Weather Forecast, brought to you from the Devil Bend's Natural Features Reserve. The Devil Bend Natural Features Reserve, a haven for water birds and walkers, includes the largest inland water body on the Mornington Peninsula. The lowland forest reservoirs and shoreline provide valuable habitat and glistening scenery to enjoy picnics, fishing, photography and bird watching, and using non-powered watercraft. You can explore Devil Bend via the scenic walking tracks that wind around the reserve. From the easy boardwalks to the more adventurous 11.5 kilometer Devil Bend circuit track around the reservoir. Time to see what the week ahead has in store for us weather-wise. Today, Saturday, the 10th of July, brought us a mostly cloudy, cold, misty day. We started with an overnight low of 1 and reached a high of 12. Sunday sees much the same, partly cloudy with the chance of morning fog. Light winds becoming northerly 15 to 25 kilometers an hour in the middle of the day. We are looking at a low of 3 and a high of 14. Monday brings a shower or two with a low of 6 and a high of 14. Tuesday remains partly cloudy with a medium 40% chance of showers most likely in the morning and evening. Expect a high of 14 and a low of 7. Wednesday the 14th of July will be cloudy. Expect a high of 80% chance of showers with winds northerly 25 to 35 kilometers an hour with a high of 14 and a low of 9. Thursday sees much the same cloudy, high 80% chance of showers 
winds northerly 20 to 30 kilometers, turning northwesterly during the day. We will feel a low of 9 and a high of 15. And finally, Friday brings another cloudy, wet day with a 90% chance of showers. Winds once again northwesterly 20 to 30 kilometers an hour. Prepare for a high of 14 and a low of 8. The 250 hectare Devil Bend Reservoir is recognized by BirdLife International as being globally important for their conservation of bird populations, including the threatened blue-billed duck. When here, keep an eye out for the majestic white-bellied sea eagle. You can also cycle along the tracks or horse ride along the bushland of the southern boundary. Come and relax by the shores of the Devil Bend Reservoir. Enjoy a picnic, some wildlife watching, and water activities. Non-powered watercraft such as canoes and kayaks can even be used in a designated zone at the northern arm of the reservoir, with two launch facilities along the western shoreline trail. See the reserve and its wildlife from a whole new perspective as you paddle through the serene waters. For more information about the Devil Bend Natural Features Reserve, go to the Parks Victoria website. Until next week, take good care. And to Muzz with the Surf Report. Morning guys, Muzz here yet again for another Surf Report for the Mornington Peninsula. As you can see behind me, what a magnificent day. It is a balmy three degrees, which isn't uh, so comfortable, but middle of mid-winter where we are now, and we're still not seeing any of those winter ground swells and northwesterly winds. We're back to having northerlies and northeasterlies. So today, Thursday, swell sort of fading out a little bit. Tomorrow, it's gonna to be smallish beach, beach breaks and offshore. Saturday's the only hiccups when we go onshore. But then come Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday next week, it looks like it's only going to be sort of three to four foot on the beaches, maybe a bit bigger towards the middle of the week. But it pretty much looks like it's going to be a run of beach breaks yet again, and no big ground swells, but things can change. Uh, it's where I'm going as soon as I've done this, I'm heading around the beaches and having a look. So with the incoming tide and three to four foot of swell, it could be pretty good. So. Uh, and that's looking like the forecast. So enjoy it and I'll see you next week. And that's all from our team here at RPPV News, serving the community with stories that matter to you. Keep watching and do tell your friends. Stay safe, use the QR codes and get vaccinated if you can. Bring you the news from coast to coast across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula. I'm Katie Sharp. See you for the next edition.